वेलकम टू द एथ एपिसोड ऑफ एड्यू चैट विथ डॉक्टर सुजीत दिस सीरीज इज एक्चुअली डिजाइन टू एंसर योर क्वेश्चन रिलेटेड टू योर प्रैक्टिस योर स्टाफ योर पेशेंट्स योर ट्रीटमेंट योर चार्जेस योर स्ट्रेटेजी टू ग्रो योर प्रैक्टिस एंड आई एम श्योर इट इज बेनिफिटिंग सो मेनी डेंटिस अराउंड द ग्लोब एंड आई एम गेटिंग सो मेनी ईमेल्स क्वेश्चन फ्रॉम ऑल ऑफ यू एंड आई एम हैप्पी टू एंसर ऑल ऑफ दैम फॉर यू but then we cannot answer all of them so in every episode i try to answer three to four questions for you and we choose the best question of the week and the person who gets the best question of the week award gets the copy of my international best seller book new age dental premier absolutely free so today i'm going to answer three questions in this episode and the voice of the question behind the camera is palak so let's start with the eighth episode of edu chat with dr sujit so palak what the first question of the day dr kalpana vijay has asked how do you relate the law of demand and supply to our profession well dr kalpana the demand and supply is related and is applicable to every business profession in the world in fact no matter in which vocation you are the demand and supply thing is always there and the entire thing is based on this principle whether the demand is high or the supply is high now i give you an example okay there were times when the mobile phones were very costly why because there were very few companies who used to make or manufacture the mobile phones and even the technology in a very primitive stage there were times when the computers were very expensive in fact they were of this size and this price but then eventually whether it is your mobile phone whether it is your computers whether it is with any of the technology say for example the flight journey okay the flight travel was super expensive around like 2 3 decades ago so as more and more technology comes into the play the fields which are related to technology the refinement happens the advancement happens and the cost eventually goes down and there comes a point where there are so many companies which are manufacturing the mobile there are so many airlines companies and so many companies which are making the computers and the laptops with the advancement of the technology there is lot of supply and because there is lot of supply even if the demand and the awareness has gone up because of too much of supply naturally the prices have come down and the prices have actually come down to the level which is called competitive pricing and fortunately or unfortunately dentistry also has fallen into this trap there were times when there were two very less number of dental colleges very less number of dentists i have practiced in a small town for 18 years and i know that you know there were like only two or three dentists in the entire district three decades ago only like three four five maximum 10 dentists in the entire district and now is a time when my own tehsil place taluka place has got more than 10 dentists so naturally because the supply has gone up okay no more number of dentists are passing out after the graduation or post graduation simply because there are more number of dental colleges there were times when this country had less than 100 dental colleges now we have more than 300 dental colleges so around 25000 dentists are graduating and post graduating in this in this country every single year so naturally the supply is more and therefore even if the awareness of dentistry has gone up even if the people's paying capacity has gone up because of huge supply lot of or big number of dentists you know what and how it has affected the competition has gone up to an absolute cutthroat level and not just that it becomes very difficult for every practicing dentist to increase your treatment charges with every passing year even if the raw material prices have are going up even if the rents the overheads the electricity bills the staff salary everything is going up it becomes difficult for us to get more and more number of patients because there are too many dentists and people have too many options and at the same time the supply is definitely more than demand so honestly speaking the demand supply ratio is applicable 
to every single business profession in the world and dentistry is no exception to it right so let's move to this second question yes palak what's the next question dr jatin agrawal has asked how to decide the incentives to the staff in a dental clinic okay good question dr jatin how to decide the incentive now i think there are three aspects to this particular question what to give how to give and how much to give and in fact what to give you can add one more thing when to give okay now when it comes to what to give i'll tell you what like let me answer it uh, you know from when to give let me start this from when to give now when to give is you can give the incentive to your staff monthly quarterly or maybe yearly see we are in a profession this is not a corporate world in the corporates the incentives are given literally on monthly basis because there are targets that are set and the entire team is behind completing the targets all the time but because we are professionals that to in medical professionals setting targets is definitely neither correct nor ethical so when it comes to adding incentive to your staff it has to be in the form of some kind of bonus or even if it is incentive the purpose is to encourage them for their good work rather than making it their privilege or right okay so when to give you can give it monthly you can give it uh, quarterly you can give it annually now how or what to give you can give it in cash or kind like for example you can give the cash incentive depending upon the percentage or whatever or you can give the incentive in the form of any gift in the form of the dress in the form of the sweets in the form of the monthly picnic or you know monthly lunch or dinner annual picnic biannual picnic or whatever now this is the best way and there are a lot of options okay so you can choose any of the options which you think that suits you your staff and your practice and now the next question is how much to give okay so how much to give it can vary depending upon what you are comfortable in giving it can be depending upon the percentage of your practice or revenue it can be the percentage of your net profit okay so it can be literally like 1% 2% 5% whatever you are comfortable with so when it comes to cash incentive when it comes to kind or bonuses or you know maybe annual bonus diwali bonus whatever normally it's very popular in indian dentistry that you know we give diwali bonus to the staff so a lot of people give one month salary as the bonus few give 15 day salary as a bonus or whatever so there are a lot of varieties to choose when it comes to when to give how to give and how much to give it varies from practice to practice city to city and yes it also can vary from staff to staff because there is someone in your own team who is probably adding more value as compared to somebody else and it is absolutely okay and fair to give different proportion of incentives to your staff remember it is not necessary that everybody deserves the same because the value which every staff add is definitely different so every staff can add different value and deserve different incentive i hope it gives you lot of options to give the incentives about when how and how much right so let's move to the third question palak what is the third question dr sunil kumar has asked how can we do empanelment with cghs and echs okay so empanelment with cghs echs or any of the government medical facilities the answer is very simple you need to contact them you need to complete their formalities you need to go through their terms and conditions and you need to make an agreement with them now remember whether it is cghs or echs or any similar medical health facilities for central or state government employees the treatment charges which are prescribed by the governments are normally way less as compared to what the treatment charges are for private dental practitioners so if you are going for any of this kind of empanelments remember the first thing are you okay with those treatment charges can you do any of the treatments like you know root canal for maybe 1000 or 2000 rupees 
What kind of practice you have? Do you have the mass practice? Do you have the class practice? What are your normal treatment charges? How your normal treatment charges differ from the charges which are prescribed by the government under the CHHS or ECHS schemes? Will you be able to cope up with that charges? Or you want to have that empanelment and you will explain the patient that this is what you are getting from the government and our charges are this much and this is the difference and you will have to pay the difference from your own pocket. So do you want to create that kind of arrangement in your practice for your patients who comes through the CGHS or ECHS schemes? So there are multiple ways, but in a sense, before you go for it, your first task is to ask yourself, do you really want to go for it? Or you are just going for it to have more patients and more footfall in your practice. Okay, be very clear about your motto, your motive about why you want to do that empanelment. And if you want to, if you're not comfortable with it, my honest suggestion would be do not go for it. If you are comfortable with it, make sure that you are prepared to follow all the terms and conditions, all the regulations, all the restrictions which they have for as the rules and regulations for any dental practice. So, and if you had decided that you are going to go ahead with it, just contact the, you know, the uh, required authority, the, what we call it as the decision maker or the, uh, you know, the person who is responsible, the government officer who can give you this empanelment after inspection of your clinic and completing all the paper formalities, right? So you can definitely go for it and you may not go for it. It depends on what kind of practice you want to build. It depends on what kind of practice you already have. And it depends most importantly upon your motive behind the empanelment. So I hope you got your answer, Dr. Sunil Kumar. So well, with this, we come to the end of the eighth episode of Edu Chat with Dr. Sujit. And which was the best question? I think the question that was asked by Dr. Jatin was the best question. So how to decide about the bonuses and incentives to, the, uh, you know, to your staff? So Dr. Jatin, congratulations, you have won the copy of my international bestseller book, New Age Dentalpreneur, free of cost. You can get in touch with us or maybe our team will connect with you and to get your shipping address so that we can send you the book. So friends, uh, I hope you like this episode and keep on asking your questions because I'm going to choose only top three for the next episode. So let's see you again in the next episode. This is Dr. Sujit Pardeshi signing off from Edu Chat with Dr. Sujit. I'll see you again in the next time. Thank you.